All right, let's talk about the second feature. What about this matrix? So from the previous video, of course, you know one of the eigenvalues is 14. And the corresponding eigenvector is 0, 0, 1, 0. But can you see another? And the answer is yes. The special feature in this matrix is that every row adds up to the same number. 11 plus 13 plus 1, 25. These add up to 25. These add up to 25. And these four numbers add up to 25. So each row adds up to 25. So as I'm, look, as I'm drawing a couple more sets of brackets, think about how does adding up to the same number help you identify the corresponding eigenvector? Well, helps you to identify the eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector. What vector essentially adds up every number in each row? What vector essentially, well, adding up all the numbers in each row is the same as adding up the four columns. <clears throat> what vector would bring forth this feature? What vector would effectively add up the columns? What's the column adding vector? Well, it's a vector that takes exactly one of each, co one of each column. So it's the vector 1, 1, 1, 1. Think about what happens when you multiply, what's the result of multiplying this matrix by this vector? This vector will add the four columns together. Adding the four columns means adding up each row for each of the entries. So the answer will be 25, 25, because the second row is up to 25. 25 and 25. Each row adds up to 25. So the result of multiplying this matrix by a column of all 1s results in a column of all 25s. And now we ask the key eigenvalue question. The eigenvalue question. Is the result a multiple of the input? And the answer is yes. That multiple is 25. So 25 is an eigenvalue of this matrix. 25. 25 is an eigenvalue of this matrix. And 1, 1, 1, or any multiple, non-zero multiple thereof, can be treated as the corresponding eigenvector. What about this matrix? So, again, you know one of the eigenvalues, it's 7, because it's a number, it's the only non-zero number in its row, and it also happens to be on the diagonal. It's just that because it's the only non-zero number in its row, you don't immediately know the corresponding eigenvector. You still have to complete the tail end of the eigenvalue procedure, which is subtracting 7 from the diagonal and performing Gauss Gaussian elimination until you see the null space of the resulting matrix. But is there one more? And here, every column adds up to 10. So when every column adds up to 10, once again, because the matrix and its transpose have identical eigenvalues but different eigenvectors, uh, generally different eigenvectors, you can conclude that this matrix has an eigenvalue of 10, but for the corresponding eigenvector, once again, I have to perform the tail end of the eigenvalue procedure. So in this matrix, you know two eigenvalues, 14 and 25, and both of its eigenvectors. And in this matrix, you know two of its eigenvalues, 7 and 10, and neither one of the eigenvectors without doing a little bit more work. So there you go. Now you know two features to be able to easily tell the eigenvalues. Let's move on to the third.